What if I told you that there is a very special type of cookware that can literally go from the freezer to the flame to your table? Because that's what it's designed to do. Then what if I told you that this same cookware can be used in the oven, in the microwave, and even under a broiler? Or how about also that this cookware is non-porous, which means it won't react with foods and is really easy to clean? Or that a quarter billion pieces of these cookware were made in all shapes and sizes and that they can still be bought today, though not necessarily new? Best of all, you can buy this cookware for just a few dollars and it will last a lifetime. Well, there is one type of cookware for which all of these things are true and it is called vintage corningware. Today, I'm gonna to tell you why vintage corningware is some of the most amazing cookware ever made and why it deserves a place in your kitchen. Hello and welcome to I Want To Cook. My name is Chef Matt and this channel is all about helping you be a better cook. And boy, do we have a special episode today. We are talking about all things Corningware. Now, if you watch this channel regularly, you know that I love this stuff. I'm a big Corningware enthusiast and I use it every single day, either to cook with or to serve food in. Oftentimes, both. Yes, I am a huge fan of vintage Corningware and I think after watching this video, you might be too. Now, when I talk about corningware in this episode, I'm talking about the vintage stuff. Corningware is still made, but the modern stuff is made out of stoneware. And that's fine for use in the oven or the microwave, but its properties come nowhere close to the vintage stuff. Vintage corningware is made from a material called pyroceram, and it was actually invented by mistake at Corning, which made and still makes specialty glass products. So flashback to the 1950s and this guy, Dr. Donald Stuckey, was working on creating a new type of photosensitive glass. But what happened is he had the glass plate in an oven and instead of going to 600 degrees Celsius, it roared to 900 degrees Celsius. That was mistake number one. But when Dr. Stuckey looked in the oven, instead of seeing melted glass, he saw a solid plate that was milky white. Uh, then mistake number two happened. He got his tongs and when he went to grab the plate out of the oven, it dropped. But instead of shattering all over the floor, it bounced. It was that durable. And just like that, that Corning researcher would go on to create a new type of glass ceramic, which they called pyroceram. Now, in addition to pyroceram's ability to withstand super high temperatures, it also was able to withstand thermal shock. That means it could go from really, really high temperatures to freezing temperatures or vice versa and not break. Now, interestingly, pyroceram first gained the attention not of the cooking world, but of the U.S. government. You see, this material was perfect for use in missiles and rockets. They would go on the nose cones and they were able to withstand extreme temperatures of being shot up into the atmosphere and coming back down. They wouldn't crack. But it wouldn't be long before pyroceram found its place in the kitchen in corningware. And again here, it came at a perfect time. You see, for decades, Corning had been making Pyrex. You know, you're probably familiar with Pyrex jars like this or Pyrex baking dishes. And again, those were great for the oven, but they couldn't withstand the heat from a stove. But corningware could. That made it far more versatile cookware than something like Pyrex. Corningware launched in the late 1950s and it was an immediate success. For the next 40 years, Corning would make 750 million pieces of Corningware proudly made in the USA. They came in a vast array of shapes and sizes, from little small baking dishes like this to big, huge Dutch ovens like this. There's also plenty of roasting dishes like this, uh, casserole dishes like this, and even soup pots like this. Now, a lot of these had this famous blue corn flour design that Corningware launched with, but there were a lot of different designs over the years. Some of them were limited editions and only made for a year or two, but they were all made from this special material called pyroceram. Brilliantly, those that used glass lids were made out of sister brand Pyrex. And get this, Corning even made handles for these so that you could use them just like a regular pot. Mm -hmm. 
Now, in the late 1990s, Corning actually stopped making Corningware. It sold its entire consumers division to another company. And like I mentioned, that other company still makes Corningware, but most of it is made out of stoneware and not pyro ceram. But here's the thing. Vintage Corningware is still widely available. You just have to buy it used. I can almost guarantee that you can walk into just about any thrift shop in the USA and find a piece of Corningware. It was that popular. I'm sure that your mother or grandmother had some in their cupboard. In addition to thrift stores, you can easily find this online. You can find it at auction sites like eBay or places like Etsy. There was just so much of it made and it was so durable that there's just a ton of pieces out there. My go-to shopping spot for Corningware is the thrift store. And best of all, I get these pieces for just a few dollars each. They are so inexpensive. And like I say, they will last a lifetime. Now, if you're wondering how to decipher old vintage Corningware from the modern stuff, well, here's an easy way to test. Just look for this flame logo right here and look for it being said made in the USA. If you see these two things, then that's a sure sign that it is made of pyroceram and that means it is safe on the range, in the oven, anywhere. The modern stuff that's made out of stoneware, it doesn't have those properties. Now, I should note that if you really want brand new Corningware, some of it is still being made on a very limited basis. So there is actually one factory in France that is still making Corningware out of original Pyroceram. They have a deal with the new owner, but it is like really expensive. We're talking like $80 or so for a piece. My advice is just go to a thrift store and buy it for a fraction of the cost. Now I'm going to quickly run through the positive attributes of vintage Corningware, uh, along with some downsides that may not make it the cookware for everyone. Now, as I mentioned, Corningware's most special property is its ability to resist thermal shock. Literally no other cookware can do this, going from the freezer to the flame of a stove or even under a broiler. In fact, when Corningware first came out, one of the advertisements showed a piece in a block of ice on one side and a flame coming at it at the next, and it didn't break. So this stuff really can be used anywhere, and that is just such a great property. I use it in the microwave, on the range, in the toaster oven, just everywhere. And like I say, it is really inexpensive. I buy this stuff for maybe just a few dollars each at the thrift store. Um, it is so inexpensive and you know, it's a great quality made in USA product. And since nearly a billion of these pieces were made, like I say, they are super easy to find if you know what to look for. Now these pieces, these are older than me. I have pieces from like the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, even the late 1950s. I have really old Corningware pieces and they still function perfectly today. I also love the fact that it's non-porous. So that means it won't react with foods like you know tomatoes or other acidic foods. And it's really easy to clean. Usually some soap is all it takes or a little barkeeper's friend to really make it look like new. Another thing that I found useful is if you find little gray marks on these, well, a lot of people think that that's like metal. Well, there is no metal in these. That's actually from metal utensils that were maybe scraped on this. It's that hard that it was harder than the metal in utensils. To get that stuff off, I use something like a magic eraser. That usually does the trick. And finally, I think this stuff just has a timeless design. It is just so beautiful to my eye, uh, especially something even like this. You know, this was made decades ago, and this is just a nice plain piece here. And I think it just has a nice timeless design. It's just really, really beautiful. Now for all the things vintage Corningware has going for it, it's not perfect. Really no cookware is. And first of all, you should know that if you have an induction range, this isn't gonna work on it. Uh, to use induction, you need metal, and specifically, you need a metal that is magnetic, like cast iron or some stainless steels. I did a whole video on how to know what cookware works on an induction range, and I will put that in the description below. But just know that Corningware won't work because it is a glass ceramic, and that won't conduct the heat of an induction range. Also know that it's really not my first choice for searing. If I'm searing a steak or chicken or something like that, I'm gonna use metal. Uh, this stuff can get really, really hot, but again, I find that it just doesn't sear foods quite as well as metal. 
And finally, it's hard to find pieces with handles like this. You know, you can find some skillets, you can find some pots, but if you want a big, long, sturdy handle, well, that's a little bit harder to find on Corningware. Uh, even if you have one of the small ones like these, and these can be a little harder to find too, these, these handles that clip onto the sides of pots and pans. But to me, the benefits of vintage Corningware far outweigh any negative attributes. Like I say, I have a ton of cookware and a lot of it is Corningware. I think it is just so versatile and just so useful and not to mention cheap. Now I should note that Corning made other types of cookware too, some really neat stuff, but well, let's save those for another episode. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful and maybe it will turn you on to vintage Corningware just like I was so many years ago. Let me know, do you use this stuff? Uh, was it used in your house growing up? Maybe this will even bring back some memories and maybe you'll see that mom and grandma really knew what they were doing using this stuff. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Welcome to my kitchen. I am so glad that you are here. Until next time, I hope you want to cook.